Okay, good afternoon. Uh, first, oh, sorry. Okay. First of all, thank you to organize the committee to this invitation to have the opportunity to um, talk about pride and protein exchange here. And my talk is about pride and protein exchange and how to make it proteomics data accessible and ready. So, well, uh, price is, is in the context of uh, proteomics service and the ABI, and is also part of all different databases like Intact and uh, Reactome and Biomodels. Pride uh, and Intact has the the main goal of all, both of them is to provide data uh, to protein sequences like Uniprot and biomodels and reactants uh, are databases to provide information, other annotation and other high level information about protein sequences. My talk, uh, the overview of my talk, my talk is about protein exchange for surgeon. Um, then I will try to talk about prion protein exchange, uh, try to go in details about prion components and the current, current and future developments. Protein Exchange Consortium have the goal uh, to develop a framework um, for, st uh, for standard data submission and dissemination based on PSI standards. Uh, it's include, it includes right now uh, three di different main databases, uh, which are Peptide Atlas, Pride, and Massive. Uh, it, one of the main um, key points is a common identifier, identifier space. Um, it is based on two different workflows. One is MS, MS uh, data, and the other one is SRM data. And the main goal is to make the data available and reusable for the end users. The main workflow is like um, the, the researcher uh, can submit their, their results data, their raw data, and some metadata related with the publication to all of these databases, the partners. And then one central point highlight when, when one data set is submitted, the central point is highlighted that this is that data set was submitted and published. And also it's a way to to announce this to other databases like PayPal, Atlas, GPNDV, and Uniprot and Nextprot. Uh, these are um, uh, this is the, the interface of Massive. You can submit individually to those uh, um, resources and then the um, the data is published in, in Proteome Exchange. This is Basel for SRM and this is how it looks uh, right. Let's see how, how is the submission process. The submission process can be in two ways. Partial submission, which is basically the raw data, can be submitted to, to Proteome Exchange. And a complex submission, which is raw data, also you can submit your big list and also the final results. The, uh, for a complete submission, you need to deposit, uh, must be based on standards, like XML right now, um, MCI.ML, but in the future also will be MCDAP. But also you can provide uh, some metadata related with the experiment, and I will try to talk about the submission process. Um, other files like this, one, the FASTA file that was used to, for the identification. One of the great things is the uh, PSI community release uh, uh, is the standard MCI DML, which is a, an, X, uh, an XML file a standard that right now is supported, is supported by most of the search engines. And basically, most of the search engines can export their results to MCI DML, and it's a major step because in the past, we need to convert all the, uh, the results to private XML using our own tools and it causes a lot of problems. In, um, but right now, most of the search engines are um, taking care of this uh, issue. We are moving in, a, in, in another direction also. It's basically not only to have the identification result, but also to have quantitation data in the same file, which is the MCDAP. And also, it's a lightweight file that can contain metadata, protein, uh, peptide, the PSN, and also small molecules is also use it in metabolomics right now. It was recently published in molecular cell proteomics. The, the components of the submission process are based on three tools. 
the stock tools. One is the price converted, is the search engines uh, that uh, give you the results. It's, it's not supported, MCI NML is not supporting a PSI standard. Then we convert this with using price, price converter. Then we have another tool, this Prime Spectrum, which is used to uh, visualize and have some quality measure of the experiment. And also we have the VX submission tool, which is the one that submit the data to, uh, to Prime. The VX submission tool captures some the relation between the files that uh, the researcher is providing. Also, uh, it's mandatory to provide some metadata related with the, each experiment. Uh, the publication, the tissue. Um, one of oh, uh, another major step is that this uh, process is automatically based on Aspera, which means that uh, the upload of the, of the data is really, really fast. Then, Prime Spector is right now the only tool that supports most of the standard PSI standard. You can visualize MC Identimer previous year submission, but also after your submission, MCML file, and right now we are working on MCTAP, uh, which contains also quantitation data. Then you can have some visualization, uh, very nice visualization about your experiment, the number of proteins identified, the number of peptide binding proteins, and you can have a measure of the experiment. Also, it's really good because the reviewers can also open and download those files and check the quality of those experiments using Prime Spector, which is uh, really interesting. Then we have the, the pipeline to uh, commit all the files to the to the to Pride, and basically it's based in three main components: the submission validation pipeline, which check all the quality measure of related with the file that the submitted is providing. Then we have the submission pipeline, which are basic it add all of the information th uh, of the project to a database. And then we convert all of the all of the file, no, no matter if it's a Pride XML, MC ML, to MC tab basic uh, and to MGF and index all uh, all of this information in a solar server. This is how it looks Pride right now. Then the main page is a search page. You can see here all of the experiment in Pride. Um, you can search by different fields, species, uh, um, uh, cell type and, and all filters. Then you can go to the uh, to the project. If the project contains, if it's a partial submission, then you you will not have information of the result. But if you if it's a complete submission, you can download the prime inspector and see the results. And then you will have in the future the possibility to see the protein table, which is all of the proteins identified in this, in this experiment. You have also some information about the experiment, the title, the description, the publication. And right now, also, you will, you will be able to see the experiment in, deta in details in the web, not only using Prime Spectre, but also in, in the web, you can check the protein, the PSM related with, with uh, each protein. I think Antonio was here last year, and he presented something related with that. After after the submission process, then protein exchange um, protein exchange know that er, uh, there is a system that protein exchange know that one uh, data set was published in one of their uh, partners, and then he, 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 there is a central point which is protein central, a web page where where we control all of the experiment, and then it doesn't matter if it's in Pride. Here you have a column when that said if it's in Pride or in um, Puzzle or other repositories. At the moment, uh, we have um, more than 8% of the submission are uh, stored in Pride, but also 12% uh, is in Puzzle, but massive because it's recently joined, it, it's just uh, 2%. Uh, the number of data set is growing, and you will see here, for example, for Homo sapiens, we have more than 500 uh, submissions and, and projects, um, but at the same time, the volume of data is also growing. Then, if you hear, I mean, the number of submissions is also very well distributed around the world, which is uh, interesting because it's getting more and more popular that uh, submitters, every time that they 
pro, uh, submit a paper, they provide also their raw data uh, in, in, one of the rep, in, in one of the repositories. And this is a really interesting graph, for example, about the, the number of, of, of submission by uh, journals. Here you will see, for example, PLOS One, which is not a basic proteomic journal, contain a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, protein exchange submissions, more than 20. And the access is also higher and it's getting more and more. Future development, uh, the idea is to make, uh, after the release of and the publication of the two drafts of the human protein uh, this year, the, I mean, the, the race for trying to reanalyze more and more of the data that Bright contain and the protein exchange contain is getting more um, and more common. And people are, uh, and the researchers are starting to download, experiment and reanalyze and submit it again to, to Bright, which means that we need to be able to make the data more accessible and more easy to access. And the other, the, the other way we are working, oh, the other thing we are working, sorry, is to integrate all of the repositories that are now uh, de uh, under development. For example, it's not only Prime and Peptide Atlas, but also Proteomics DB, which is related with one of these publications, the Human Proteome Map, which is another repository. We are starting to, and this is what we are thinking to, we will work in this uh, BI hackathon, is the proxy system, which is basically a distributed system among different repositories, and then we will have a, like a web service implementation and a pro proxy registry to try to uh, um, map the information from different uh, re repositories, no matter the, the, the data that they are um, providing. Uh, well, as a conclusion, protein exchange is widely used right now. But I contain most of the MSMS data sets. But uh, now, uh, Massive is now in the, in, the, in the group just recently joined. Um, among, among around half of the data sets are already published. Different open source uh, about to facilitate the process, like Aspera. Data deposition able to promote the data reuse and protein exchange is open, open to new members. Well, acknowledgement for, of course, to the Pride team, the Peptide Atlas team, and, and Massive. Uh, which are the, the, the databases that are part of uh, right now of protein exchange. Thank you very much.